what's up and welcome back to my channel it's JV CEO and as per usual if you're new make sure you subscribe like and comment and if you're returning then make sure you also do the same um, some of you may know I'm about to become an uncle right and it's obviously something I'm excited about my older brother um, and um, you know we've just got some uh, some new news uh, in terms of the gender but I'll keep that a secret for now. But anyways, and um, you know, initially when my brother actually told me about the the, the pregnancy, I, I the first thing I heard talking about was, oh, bro, you know, like all the stuff I've been telling you about generational wealth. Yeah, now we've got to put it all into practice and so on and so forth. And and he was like, you're a lunatic, you know, but in a good way because that that's literally the first thing I started thinking about and the first thing I spoke to him about. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to share some of those private conversations with you guys, tell you guys what I do personally, um, but also uh, th th this video is not just about things to do to actually create generational wealth and essentially speaking, help your kids become wealthy. It's not just the monetary aspect of it. There, there's a few bits around mindset as well that I'll cover in this video. But just as a quick disclaimer, right, I will touch upon stocks, but if you know, or if you know me, then you would know that. Uh, stocks is not really my preferred area, but that's not to say that you shouldn't invest in stocks because I think stocks are brilliant and stocks are beautiful if you know what you're doing. So number one, um, I've been doing this for a while, right? And I've never met anyone that does this. I have a fund. So I have a, a, a child fund or whatever you want to call it. So I actually put aside £100 every single month in a totally different account that is untouched. It's not my rainy day fund. It's nothing. It's literally there. In preparation for when I don't have any plans to have any kids anytime soon but it's there in preparation for when I start having kids I've been doing this for about 18 months now and um, occasionally when I've had a good month a good week I would add a bit more in there but generally speaking I put aside around a hundred pounds a month um, obviously it's I've not accumulated a huge amount yet but then let's say when there's a birth the, these are these are funds that I can then potentially put into let's say the stock market or maybe other areas uh, and, and uh, so on and so forth. Moving on from that I would definitely say investing in stocks and when I say stocks I'm not saying risky sort of penny stocks and all of that stuff no I'm, I'm talking more like blue chip companies Amazon, um, uh, Google, uh, maybe even Tesla because uh, tech is hot right now and it would continue being hot in the near future. Um, and generally speaking, the stock market uh, gives a return of approximately, I think over the last sort of 10 years, uh, I might be wrong on this, but approximately around 8%. And that's a very, very tidy return if you if you know if you're able to reinvest the profits and, and, and so on and so forth and you're not really taking money out of it. Um, if we actually calculated it slightly different, let's say Google, for example, if you had invested in Google in 2009, 10 years ago, um, you would have had a 400 percent return. And if you have in, if you had invested in the SP 500 over the same period, you would have had around a 250 percent return over that 10 year period. So, you know, once you're able to start putting aside cash and put away cash for your kids, these are areas that you can start putting it into, which then leads me on to my favorite topic, that being properties. So I said to my brother, right, real life example, I said to my brother, look, every kid gets every child hopefully you know we're in a financial position to do this for everyone's kids whether it's my kids whether it's yours whether it's my sisters my brother my other brother and I basically said look every child gets because I sat down and I took a while and I calculated all this um, before I had a conversation with my brother so I said every child gets three properties right and the idea is that we don't really stress ourselves and we don't tie a lot of our money into these deals. So we're looking at BRR deals. So that's a buy, rehab, refinance and rent. So that way we can obviously pull our money out of that deal and then move it on to another deal. Essentially speaking, we're recycling the same money over and over. That Let's say we're buying... Let's say we're buying a ninety thousand pound house, and let's say we're putting up, you know, twenty five percent, that being twenty two thousand five hundred, and maybe putting up another ten grand, and then raising the value to let's say one hundred and twenty thousand, and then pulling out most of that money, then going to do it on another property, and then another property. So that's one child done because now they have three properties, right? So now let's say that property is now worth one hundred twenty thousand, adjusted 
for inflation and appreciation over the sort of next 18 years going up by 3%, you're looking at a figure of around 200,000 up from that 120,000, right? So that means they've got three properties worth around 200,000 uh, 200, pounds each. And you've already pulled your money out of these deals long, long time ago, if that makes any sense. So essentially speaking, those properties are costing you nothing. You obviously pay a management company in the sense of a, in, or in the form of an estate agent and they manage properties for you. Um, but again, like I said, you know, you pulled out your money long, long time ago. So that's one, that's one area. So now that child now has around £600,000 in net worth. Now moving on to the rental income. Let's say you're cash flowing around uh, £350 uh, uh, net profit from these properties. Over three properties, it's around £1,050, I believe, if, if my maths is correct. £1,050. Over 12 months, is around 12500 I believe. And over 18 years, is around 226000 So from these properties, that's how much they would have sitting in an account, you know, in, in, in terms of rental income over that 18-year period. You've done the hard work already by getting them those deals, those three properties, and now in over 18 years, they'll accumulate around 226000 in rental income. Now, if we adjust that for inflation, it turns out to be around, let's say, 3.2% per, per year inflation. It turns out to be around 400000 over that 18-year period. So now you've got 400000 in liquid cash, and then you have 600000 in assets in total. Now you've, essentially speaking, made them a, a, a million, a, a million pounds, right? Bear in mind that you can take this a step further. So rather than leaving that cash flow in there, in the bank account, you can then reinvest that cash flow back into the stock market, which will probably turn that £400,000 into maybe uh, £800,000 or even a million. So now by the 18th birthday, you know, 100%, they're worth more than a million pounds. And then we spoke about building like digital assets. So obviously I'm not a big fan of, you know, creating Instagram pages for kids and pretending to be the kid. Oh, Daddy had a very bad day today. Daddy wants a hug. I think that's very cheesy. Um, and just, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. But I do think that once they start getting to a certain age, perhaps seven and above, it's probably wise, bearing in mind that this is the direction that things are headed in. The online space is huge. So the sooner you create digital asset for them, the sooner they can monetize in the sense of, let's say, a muddling contract and so on and so forth. So I think if you could put them in that space, then that would help with the whole wealth creation and also just uh, uh, putting them in the best possible position by the time they turn 18. Then we talked about a huge, a huge minus in our generation. Our parents never talked to us about finance. So a lot of the things that I know now, I figured it out myself, if I'm being honest with you. Um, and I think that's probably parts of the things that we need to break with the next generation, that being our kids. So uh, a lot more conversations around finances, you know, can't, we, we, we can't be shy to tell them what the rent costs or what the mortgage costs or what the car costs or how much daddy earns, mummy earns and so on and so forth. And I think when you're able to incorporate these things at a very young age, I think the child becomes a lot more switched on and, you know, it, it takes them into a totally different circle, man. Because right now we're, we're figuring it out because we came up the hard way and a lot of you guys watching this video probably came up the hard way as well, you know, and that's probably where our parents, uh, quote unquote, failed us because uh, they didn't talk about finances enough. Um, an example being, you know, they didn't talk about mortgages, they didn't talk about investments, nothing. So we've just had to figure it out. And a lot of us have then made a lot of mistakes in our 20s, some of us even in our 30s, and we still haven't figured it out. So now if you could change that with your offspring, then imagine how much further they would be by the time they're your age. Which then leads me on to the other point, which is essentially speaking, supporting your kids and literally keeping the doors open, right? So it's not just about, again, these are errors that our parents made. As you can see now, you know, their rappers making millions, their uh, um, athletes making millions. Our parents just wanted us to go, out, uh, go in and be medical doctors, engineers, and so on and so forth. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because we still need those. But I think it's important to just support your kids and keep the doors open. So an example being, you know, part of building that generational wealth is keeping their, their, their doors open. So 
put them into uh, football, uh, into a football academy, for example, um, have them doing extra work with regards to whatever they want to be and, and support their dreams in that regards. Um, have them doing, um, I don't know, maybe piano lessons, for example, whatever it is, just keep equipping them with like additional skills, essentially speaking, because the more skilled they are, the better advantage they have over their peers, which will become very glaringly obvious, you know, in future when they turn 18 and so on and so forth. That's what you call setting up your kids for success. And that's really how you build generational wealth. That's how most of these other uh, races build generational wealth, you know, essentially speaking. They, they support their kids in whatever their kids want to do and they, they stir their kids in the right direction and leave the doors open. So that way, there's several opportunities being presented to the kids from all angles. And then down to my... Uh, 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 my other favourite part, which is land investment, right? Again, what I said to my brother is this, right? So, of course, we can all buy Gucci and all of that stuff, right? And put the kids in Gucci. But I don't care for that. I don't care for it for myself. So why should I care for it for my child? Bear in mind that, you know, it's so easy for them to outgrow these things. Um, and, you know, you don't know if you're going to have a girl next. So you, you you can't even recycle it. Let's say if you have a boy and then a boy, then you can recycle the clothes. But otherwise, then you're probably going to end up selling it on Depop for a fraction of what you actually paid for it. So what I said to my brother is, rather than spending that money on clothes and so on and so forth, put them in Primark. Put them in Marks and Spencer. Put them in just good quality, but cheap. <laughs> <laughs> clothes right and then the the surplus from that birthdays and gifts from family and friends that cash gifts you reinvest that into land investment back home obviously i can only talk for us because you know origin being nigerian and i just thought you know what right i have properties at the moment that have done two three hundred percent in two years three years four years five hundred percent in eight years right and i'm thinking imagine we bought, let's say, imagine we spent, you know, a decent amount of money buying up plots for each child once they're born. And then maybe for uh, a few birthdays here and there. And we gift them with the plots. If the land that I own now have done this amount of appreciation, we can only imagine what the appreciation would be in 18 years for these kids. You know, so it's uh, it's an interesting one, man. But. I thought I'd share this video with you guys because I think it's important that we start having this conversation, uh, talking about building generational wealth and actually being real open about finance in general because that's how the next generation can win and win big. So make sure you like, comment and subscribe.